The low vision history is focused on patients' goals, their living situation and support mechanisms. You need to understand what the patient knows of their eye condition and how they're coping. So what brings you in today, Peggy? I want to have my eyes checked so that I can see whether you can improve my sight. Okay. So we got you some glasses a few years back. Yes. And you're not able to see what you want to with them? They're not quite strong enough. Okay, that's fine. Either that or my eyes are getting worse. Okay. We did send you to an eye doctor and he wrote back to us to say that there's nothing more he can do for your macular degeneration. Right. And so he thought maybe we could help you with magnifiers and things like that. Well, I do have a magnifier. Yes, you Which my family one. gave me. Okay. It's only a little one, mm -hmm. but it's not very good. Okay, so and, you still can't and do... And I have to use it too much across. Okay. So you may be able to help me there. Yes, we can definitely look at that. Did the eye doctor talk to you about macular degeneration and explain what, what it was when all about? When I was about? at the Ionia Hospital, yes. after I had the cataract operation in the right left eye, sorry, uh, they told me that my macula was quite bad okay. and that I could be blurry blind okay. within two years. I see. Now that was in 2011. Okay. But I can still see a little bit. That's good. That's good. All right. And you understand that macular degeneration is about the back of the eye getting a bit older? Yes, I did know yeah, that. You did know that. Yes. Okay, excellent. But I didn't realise how important it was. Okay, sure. It does affect our central vision, the macula. But even with macular degeneration, did the eye doctor tell you that you'll still have your side vision intact? No, he just said that I would be blurry blind, blurry blind. not black yes, blind. Yes, that's right. You never go black blind with yes. macular degeneration. Yeah. Okay. So what things are you having trouble with at home? Well, I'm having trouble seeing the tops of glasses. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, and keep knocking them over and having to clean up the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and I am having difficulty reading okay. large print. Large now. print, okay. So even large print books are a struggle. Yes. Okay. So I thought perhaps there may be something could be done. Definitely. To increase we'll the definitely strength look at those of the things. glasses. Okay. And what about things like your telephone? Can you see the buttons on your phone? If I have a, a, a light over it, yes. Okay, good, good. And you've got good lighting in your house? Yes. Excellent. I've got a very good light that I got from Vision Australia. Okay, excellent. And what about things like cooking and cleaning? Are you managing well with that? Well, I don't have to do that anymore. <gasps> Lucky. <laughs> I'm in a nursing oh, home. Oh, okay. So it's all taken care of for you. Yes. Okay. And what if you wanted a cup of tea? Would you pour that yourself? I can, yes. You can? And yes. you can do that without spilling the water? Oh, uh, most times. Most times. Yes. Okay. All right. And are there any craft activities or other activities you want to do or you want to keep doing? I wish I could still keep doing volunteer work. Okay. Which I can't do much of anymore. All right. And what type of volunteer work would you do? Was it computer things or...? I used to be with Breast Cancer Network Australia as a liaison officer. Okay. I was treasurer of Breast Cancer Action Group. Okay. I was a volunteer for isolated students' education in the outback. Wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and I was president of the Doncaster Senior Citizens. I see. So I was busy. That's very busy. Yeah. Was it just too much for you or was it actually your vision that no, affected? it was my vision. It was your vision. So yeah. what things can't you do because of, because of your vision? So was it that you couldn't um, manage the books well in the accounting job? I couldn't manage to see properly. I okay. had to give up driving okay. in 2011. Right. As so I was coming to stoplights, I was seeing two instead okay. of one. Oh, that's a bit scary. So I thought it was time to give up driving. Okay, fair and enough. And I gave up driving early 2011. Okay. And so how do you get around? I, I, catch, I was catching the bus. Yep, okay. But I'm finding now that it's very hard to see the steps to get up and down into the bus. Okay. So, so now I have to have taxis. Use taxis, okay. <laughs> do you have a half-price taxi card? Yes, I do. You do, excellent. 
Okay, and what about a pension? Do you have a pension card at all? I have an aged pension. You have an aged pension. Okay, good. So you mentioned that steps are a bit of a problem. What about when you're generally walking around at home or in the gardens? Well, back at the nursing home, I have a four-wheeler. Okay, right, and that helps. Yes. Yeah. What about seeing the steps, though, or do you just know that you've come up to them because you can feel the I wheels? I can go up and down, but I have to be very careful. Right, okay. Yeah. Do you ever have trouble seeing a step or a gutter before you come up to it? Oh, no, I, I use my foot to feel it. Okay, so you're pretty careful. <laughs> so I guess your only mobility problem then would be the bus. Pardon? Your only mobility problems would be getting on and off public transport. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And what about falls? Have you had any falls well, lately? Lots of falls. Okay. Was that because you didn't see something? That's right. Yeah, yes. okay. Have you done a falls prevention program? Yes, I have. You have? Okay. And you're still doing your exercises? Yes, I am. Excellent. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So we want to take a look at your glasses today and take a look at other tools to help with your reading and, yes. um, and other activities. Okay. Okay. That'd be lovely. Good. So in terms of your general health, last time we saw you, you were using some medicine for your diabetes. Is that yes. still the case? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And your sugar control, has that been good? Is your doctor? I'm on a tablet for that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And is your doctor ha happy with your sugar levels? Yes, he is. Good. Now, just, um, just another question I wanted to ask you, another two questions. During the past month, have you been bothered by feeling down, depressed or hopeless? Uh, I've had problems with the blood pressure. Okay. Which has made me very dizzy. Okay. But that other than that's all right. Yeah. And has that made you feel down, depressed or hopeless? Not depressed, but just not yourself. Just not yourself, okay. And during the past month, have you been bothered by little interest or pleasure in doing things? Well, at the lodge where I am, mm -hmm. we have two lots of activities that I go to. Good. And one is making cards, mm -hmm. like birthday cards. That's nice. Sympathy cards. And the other one's an art class. Okay. Which I find very hard. Okay because I have to use my magnifier glass. I see. To see what I'm doing. Okay. And I don't have that in the room mm -hmm. where we do it. And so does that mean, does that reduce your interest or pleasure in doing the things well, you like? it has cut down the pleasure of doing it. Okay. Great. And so any other problems? Yes, May, there is. I have terrible trouble with Glare. Okay. Bright sunshine. Mm hmm Very bright lights. Okay. I can't see. We'll definitely take a look at that today. Thank you. So it sounds like aside from the glare, your major issue is about the reading and your glasses and magnifiers. Yes. Okay. So that's what we'll take a focus at today. Okay. Hi Sharon, I think Hi. we've seen a really good example of a patient history that May's just given with Peggy. Mm. Uh, the highlights for me were that she's really tried to work out the goals, why Peggy's there. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, it's often stronger glasses. And so in the patient history, it's really important to kind of address that that's something that may, on, may or may not be able to get assistance. I think the other things that we noticed there were that um, May had asked about what aids Peggy had used in the past, and often patients have tried aids in the past. Yes. So I think you know, getting patients to bring them along and encouraging um, when the appointment's made for patients to bring them along is important as well. Mm -hmm. I like the way too that she talked about um, the eye condition and tried to really get a feel for what Peggy knew and what she wanted to know about the eye condition because that's part of what we can offer as optometrists because we're obviously experts in discussing that and often there perhaps hasn't been time with others to discuss the important issues about the eye condition and the patient doesn't know as much as they want to know about the condition itself. 
Yeah, I agree. It's a really critical element. Um, I also thought it was good that she um, explored a little bit about Peggy's living situation. That can be really important. Um, obviously, in Peggy's case, where she's in residential care, she gets a lot of support with um, tasks in her living situation. That's not always the case with a lot of people and um, the sort of support that they might need around the home with cooking and cleaning can vary a lot and sometimes we'd be asking more questions specifically about that situation if a person is living independently. I also thought it was really good that she talked about um, falls. Uh, falls are very common in older people in particular but um, vision impairment is also a, a major risk factor for falls. Peggy talked about difficulties with steps and that's really quite common. Um, contrast problems can lead to difficulties with steps. Um, an orientation and mobility professional is a great person to refer to who can help out with marking the edges of steps um, and also might give advice on the need for a support cane or some sort of other cane, perhaps an identification cane where that's necessary. It was also um, another thing that might be raised is um, talk to people about Charles Bonnet syndrome. Charles Bonnet syndrome is quite common in people with macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. um, although the reports vary, somewhere between 5% and 40% of people with AMD report um, Charles Bonnet syndrome. And that's really where they notice uh, visual hallucinations. They might be of objects or lines or actually people, um, but they're aware of the fact that these images aren't real. It's probably more common than we realise because people are afraid to speak out about it. Um, and oftentimes too, the family or even the GP may not understand. So it's really important to um, explain these things and to report to the GP about um, the fact that these can be quite normal with um, advanced vision loss. Um, they do go away usually for most people eventually, about 30% of people um, the hallucinations go away within about a year after they've first started noticing them. Yeah, I think the other thing just to keep in mind with the GP, and May did it nicely, was to talk about depression or raise the issue mm. of depression, which you can either do just by kind of exploring it or by doing a questionnaire as May did, because we know that depression's common with patients with low mm. vision. And if it is picked up, then you need to act on it and refer the patient on.